During the Second World War, there were a number of war criminals who committed terrible atrocities in Europe and the Pacific. A number of these were brought to their executions at the firing ranges and gallows across the world after being found guilty. But there were many Japanese war criminals who went unpunished at the end of World War II and it's believed that the Japanese army were responsible for the executions and killings of around 14 million civilians and innocent people. Some members of the Japanese government were executed for their crimes which were wide-ranging, but some of the most sadistic crimes occurred in the city of Nanking, two years before the war in Europe broke out. But one Japanese general who was condemned for his involvement of crimes committed in Nanking was Tani Hisao, who in his 60s was taken back to the site of his biggest crimes and was shot by a firing squad. Join us today as we look at the execution of the monster of Nanking, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Tani Hisao was born in December 1882, and he was born into a farming family. He had a relatively normal upbringing, but then he enlisted in the Japanese Army's training academies, and he graduated from the 15th class in 1903. He was not at the top of his class, but Tani then was drafted into the Japanese Army. He saw combat during the Russo Japanese War and was promoted to second lieutenant as part of the Guards 1st Infantry Battalion. He had initially trained as an artillery soldier, but he transitioned across to being an infantry one. But following this conflict, he continued to train at the Army War College and he wrote accounts of his experiences on the battlefield and he interviewed many other survivors and published a book titled The Secret History of the Russo Japanese War. This book was highly thought of in Japanese military circles and it did become required reading for those who studied at the Army Staff College, but there were a few Japanese generals who criticised it, saying it was not an accurate account of the conflict. But Tani was clearly a talented member of the military, and he became a military diplomat and travelled to Great Britain as a military attaché from 1915. He then became an official military observer during the First World War, and he would report back the combat situation on the Western Front. Following heading back to Japan, he then worked as an instructor at the Army Staff College where he studied, and he imparted his knowledge onto new students who wanted to become soldiers in the Japanese Army. Tani Hisao remained inside of the Imperial Japanese Army, and he was appointed to become the commander of the 61st Infantry Regiment before he became the Chief of Staff of the 3rd Division. But then Tani became part of the League of Nations Standing Committee and was an expert on military aircraft, in August 1930 he was appointed to being a Major General. He continued to act as a commander in different divisions and regiments, and further promotions came his way before he served as a commander of the Tokyo Bay Fortress. However, it was clear in the Pacific that a huge war would break out, as the Japanese sought to expand and conquer and look towards China. Hisao Tani had been charged with restructuring the 6th Division of the Imperial Japanese Army, in July 1937, the division was assigned to the Japanese China Garrison Army. They were then thrust into combat and fighting in the Second Sino-Japanese War, and they then took part in the Battle of Baiping Tianjin. But following this, it took part in further operations against the Chinese, before it became part of the 10th Army, and attacked Chinese soldiers at Hangzhou Bay. Tani Hisao's soldiers then transitioned to become part of the 18th Division and the 14th Division, they were then involved inside of the Battle of Nanking, where they were involved in the Nanking Massacre. On the march to the city, there were many Japanese war crimes committed everywhere by the Japanese forces. There was a mentality of brutality, and there was even a killing contest that took place between two officers who had a competition to see who could massacre 100 civilians with a sword the quickest. This was publicised in newspapers almost as if it was a sporting event, and the score was reported like a football match. But as the Japanese reached Nanking, they issued a demand to surrender, and they received no response, and for this it was then ordered that Nanking was to be taken by force. What came next was chaos inside of the city. There was a heavy artillery bombardment, but from the 13th of December 1937, there were random acts of murder, assault, looting and arson inside the city. The crimes continued for weeks, and what people saw inside Nanking was hell on earth. One witness wrote... The Japanese have looted widely yesterday, and today have destroyed schools and killed civilians, and assaulted women. 1,000 disarmed Chinese soldiers, whom the International Committee hoped to save, were taken from them, and by this time are probably shot or bayoneted. 
In our South Hill house, Japanese broke the panel of the storeroom and took out some odd fruit juice and some other things. The horror inside the city continued, and another witness said, The slaughter of civilians is appalling. I could go on for pages telling of cases of brutality almost beyond belief. Two bayoneted corpses are the only survivors of seven street cleaners who were sitting in their headquarters when Japanese soldiers came in without warning or reason, and killed five of their number and wounded the two that found their way to the hospital. Let me recount some instances occurring in the last two days. Last night, the house of one of the Chinese staff members of the university was broken into, and two of the women, his relatives, were assaulted. Two girls about 16 were assaulted to death in one of the refugee camps. In the university middle school, where there were 8,000 people, the Japanese came in ten times last night, over the wall, stole food, clothing, and assaulted until they were satisfied. They bayoneted one little boy of eight, who had five bayonet wounds, including one that penetrated his stomach, but I think he will live. It was Tani Hisao's forces who were part of the massacres and the crimes. For days the terror continued, and another said, two Japanese soldiers have climbed over the garden wall and are about to break into our house. When I appear they give the excuse that they saw two Chinese soldiers climb over the wall. When I show them my party badge they return the same way. In one of the houses in a narrow street behind my garden, a woman was assaulted, and then wounded in the neck with a bayonet. I managed to get an ambulance, so we could take her to the Kulo hospital. Last night up to 1,000 women and girls were said to have been assaulted. About 100 girls in Gingling College alone. You hear nothing but terror. If husbands or brothers intervene, they're shot. What you hear and see on all sides is the brutality of the Japanese soldiers. Tani then following this returned to Japan and he became commander of the Central District Army before he went to the reserve. But following the bombing of Hiroshima, he was then brought back into active service to command the 59th Army, and these soldiers were part of the final defensive effort by the Japanese Empire to deter Allied landings of Japan. But then following the surrender, he was demobilised. However, then a warrant for Tani's arrest was issued, and he was arrested in February 1946 and was charged with Class B and Class C war crimes. But as he committed many of his crimes in China, Tani Hisao was extradited to the country, to stand trial at the Nanking War Crimes Tribunal. When presented with the charges, he denied them all, and said that his soldiers were disciplined in Nanking, and he said the area of Nanking his soldiers operated in was evacuated mostly. But no witnesses could identify his unit numbers, and there was evidence presented to the court saying he actually operated in different areas that he said. But the judge refused his request to call his chief of staff and other officers to become witnesses, and the judge said that due to the witnesses who saw his soldiers rampaging throughout the city, there was simply no need. There was some controversy regarding his trial, but the ruling of the court said that all Japanese commanders who took part in the Battle of Nanking had an equal responsibility for the horrors that took place inside of the city, and because of this, they were judged as guilty. Tani Hisao, despite the fact he was not the most senior general involved in the battle, was sentenced to death, he was then taken to Nanking and the mountain nearby where he was to be killed. There was a huge crowd that had gathered to witness his execution. There was a small firing squad that had been gathered to perform it. Many of the people who witnessed Tani's execution had been hiding during the atrocities, but Tani was then ordered to kneel down in front of the crowd. Then an executioner went up behind him and shot him in the back of the head. Tani Hisao was a Japanese general who was convicted of war crimes and he was a commander whose soldiers were involved in atrocities in China. He was a man who was in his 60s when he was executed in front of a crowd of thousands, but he had a long history inside the Japanese army. His Sao was a man whose direct involvement in crimes in Nanking was disputed, but he was executed for the fact the courtroom applied the shared responsibility clause, meaning that any commander inside of Nanking was condemned to death and guilty. The stories of Nanking were tragic and were horrific, and the whole city was a scene of depravity and terror. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.